SEC Chair Gary Gensler says a government shutdown will lead to limited markets oversight by the SEC. He spoke with Bloomberg's Kaylee Lines in an exclusive interview after the SEC voted in favor of new rules to clamp down on investment fund names it says can be misleading. To pick up on crypto, knowing that you cannot comment on any specific litigation, that you are just one member of a five-member commission, when you take collectively recent court decisions we have seen, how have they made you, Gary Gensler, think differently about regulating this space? Uh, I'll tell you, I think the same thing. It's about ensuring for compliance and protecting the investing public. And this is a field... Uh, it kind of reminds me a bit of the 1920s securities markets 100 years ago where a lot of people were getting hurt. And Congress came along and said, we've got to clean that up. And, of course, we had the Great Depression. And um, the securities laws apply to crypto security tokens. And there's nothing incompatible with those tokens, with the securities laws, investors still benefit from disclosure and investors get to choose based on that disclosure. Investors benefit from laws against fraud and manipulation and, and other um, conflicts in the markets. And we've just seen so many people hurt and lost their money, hoping for a better future and there's so many hucksters and fraudsters in this field. And so nothing any court would say would change your mind on that? I wish something a court could say which would actually bring the compliance sooner, but this was a field that was built as a global field, so a lot of it's outside of the U.S. And we have very robust securities laws in this country. Um, having said that, there are a lot of folks in this field that are trying to um, say, well, those don't apply to us. When you can go to a website and you can see who stands behind that token and their, their marketing ideas and their going to conferences, and I suspect you've interviewed one or two of them, too. You'd be right about that. I'm not going to ask you to comment specifically on what's next in the Grayscale case, but in part of that ruling, it was about the distinction between futures and spot, and it not being clear that really fundamentally they were differently in terms of the fraud and manipulation you often talk about. My question to you is, is there a world, given those concerns you have about fraud and manipulation, that the SEC could actually revoke approval of a Bitcoin futures ETF? Uh, I Again, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of the staff work. We take into consideration any time a court rules, and we consider it and think it through and deal with filings that are in front of us. And we have a number of open filings in the Bitcoin exchange traded product space. For spot products, sure, but could you rule out revoking the futures product? Uh, I, again, I'm just, just not going to speak to the, the filings and uh, you are absolutely right. There are a number of uh, Bitcoin futures exchange traded funds, and they've been uh, live since uh, about two years. I'd like to shift gears to the question of scope three, knowing that you've gotten a lot of pushback on either direction about its inclusion. I just wonder if it is as binary is scope three is in the climate disclosure rules or it's not. Is there room for nuance here that it could be applied in certain cases to certain companies, but not others? Uh, again, I don't want to get ahead of, of the staff. We're talking about climate risk disclosure. Companies are making climate risk disclosure now. And this all comes back to a basic idea. Investors get to decide what investments they make. And investors representing tens of trillions of dollars of assets under management, literally, are making investment choices today based upon climate risk disclosures by public companies. Over 80% of the top 1,000 companies are currently, as of 2021, making climate risk disclosures. So our role is to try to bring some comparability, some efficiency to those already 
set disclosures. You asked about something very particular about greenhouse gas emissions, mm -hmm. so-called scope three emissions. And we've heard a lot from the public. We've heard from members of Congress who comment. Um, and so we're taking those into consideration and thinking through uh, how to address those comments about the economics, about the evolution of this. Um, but I don't want to prejudge where this may come out. You just mentioned efficiency, and I'm not sure how much the word efficiency can apply to what we're seeing on Capitol Hill these days in terms of trying to continue to get the government fund funded. You've spoken a bit about the impact that would have on the SEC from an operations standpoint if people are furloughed, limit the ability of the agency to do its work. But knowing that during the debt ceiling fight, you talked a lot about the potential significant financial market ramifications of a default. Is there anything significant about a government shutdown that financial markets should be worried about? I would say, first, the market regulators, <laughs> Securities and Exchange Commission, I'll leave Chair Benham to speak about the other great market regulator, the CFTC, but we're appropriated agencies. And so uh, the public should understand we will largely be a skeletal staff um, under the laws. And so the normal f oversight we have on markets will not be possible. It just simply is not for how many days that happens. Um, companies that want to go public may not find that their filings could even be reviewed by the SEC and the like during pendency of, of a shutdown. Uh, those are the most immediate functions, but also we, we won't be able to oversee the markets if there's uh, significant events or, uh, and the like. But you don't anticipate significant events could emanate from the government shutting down potentially for a prolonged period of time that would be disruptive okay. to the actual activity. We have the deepest, most liquid capital markets, but the base, the absolute base of that capital markets is our U.S. Treasury market. It's about a quarter of the market, it's $25 trillion, but it's the base. And the trust in that market is in part just that we function well, uh, that we are able to resolve our differences in our democratic uh, ways. But importantly, the treasury markets will still function. They'll, they'll be trading in the stock markets. You just won't have the oversight of the market regulators. SEC Chair Gary Gensler speaking with Bloomberg's Kaylee Lines.